Hello, possums. We're in the inner bailey of the Hardcore Castle again this week because I am going to build what is probably... Oh, it's either the most important or the second most important building that's going to be in this area. It's possible that the Great Hall is the most important. But as you can see, I have shifted the crane. It is... You can just see it up there. Oh, we might run out and have a quick look. I hope there's no menaces around. No, it looks pretty clear. There we are. One rather large double treadmill crane. Because that's got to lift up all the really heavy blocks for the rest of the Great Tower. But we are not working on the Great Tower today. As I said, I'm building this. This is the most important. Mm, most important or second most important building for the inner bailey. Now I asked last time if you guys wanted to take a guess at what it was and there were some good guesses in there but the two people who came closest were Julie Beans who said something important. You're absolutely right Julie. And Jim Girdler who said some form of storage. You're absolutely right Jim. But like, uh, I'm going to make steps there so I can get in and out. Like a lot of good medieval buildings, this will not just have one purpose. Yes, it's going to be storage down here, but then we've got a ground floor that's going to be something and a top floor that's going to be something else. So I'm just going to dig out the basement here. I'll come back to you and we'll start seriously building. There it is, all dug out, and I have put a floor in. So let's head on down. And yes, this one's on the diagonal, and I'll come back up. This one isn't. I mean, the back wall's diagonal, the front wall isn't. It doesn't matter too much. That's the stable. Yes, it's important for housing the horses. Yes, it's important because it's got the barracks on it. But this... This is going to house the Lord and the Lady and their family. This is going to house stores. This is where people are going to come and do business. This has to really look good. So all nice and square, all nice and plump. Don't tell me diagonal and therefore not square. Just think of it as a real building. We can build it on whatever angle we like. But we want the corners to be 90 degrees. The walls are going to be like the Great Hall wall. So a mixture of stone and brick. Or stone and stone brick, to be honest. To be accurate. Ah, I'll get there. <laughs> it's one of those days. Let's start. I'll just sprinkle in some stone. Now, this is going to be the main storage room for the castle. Not for foodstuffs. That would be over at the kitchens. But for what we these days would term treasure. Um, what's really assets, the non-land basis of the Lord's wealth, because really the basis for wealth is the lands you hold, the people who work for you, all that sort of thing. Now, why was the main storeroom underground? Well, think of this as a security issue. If I've got it above ground, people can maybe dig under the walls and get in that way. If it's only wattle and daub, it's an easy matter to just break in. Same with if it's wood. Stone's a bit harder, but they could still work away surreptitiously at one corner, particularly if it's a slightly secluded corner like this. They could chip away, get a couple of blocks loose and climb in that way and take things out. Once you stick it underground, it's a bit harder to do something like that. So it becomes a real security thing to have your main storage room underground. Now there will be steps down. There will be an iron door. And the key to that door would be held by the steward or by the lady herself. And the lady of the castle would actually have a fair bit to do with the everyday running of the place. The steward would definitely be reporting to the Lord, but he may also be reporting to the lady. And 
depending on what's going on, she may be the one making the big decisions day to day as to what happens here. Uh, I just need some temporary stairs in. There we go. Now I can get in and out. As to actually political power, some women did wield it. Think of Queen Matilda. Uh, if we're going to go back to Anglo-Saxon times, there's Athelflaed and others. But even if you're not going to go back that far, you've got 50% of your agricultural labour force that's women. And I don't just mean raising children and working around the home. I mean in the fields, in the buyers. You know, they're out there working just like the men are. There were female blacksmiths. Now, I'm not saying they had equal positions and equal power. But I am saying women were a part of society and were an important part. Uh, we take that one out. There we go. That's the thing about texturing. Make sure you're standing back from time to time, having a look at what you're doing, checking there's no obvious patterns coming up, and that you like the distribution of materials. Now, this whole building is going to be stone, and that's another reason to make the bottom storage room out of stone, so that you've got strength for support for the rest of the building. And speaking of support, we need support pillars. Um, there we go. I was hoping I could jump across. This is going to have a vaulted ceiling. Vaulting is an incredibly strong way of doing a ceiling for a ah, sorry for a structure like this. Sorry, that was me getting concerned. Because the other thing that we want, yes, it's got to support what goes above it, but we want a stone floor, a stone ceiling for the storage room, a stone floor for this room above. Not just for the looks of it, but you think, you're trying to break into here, it's a lot harder to break into a room that has a stone ceiling. So again, we're coming back to security. Uh, I've got to think of, do I want to... That's going to be the floor there. So, probably... Whoops, not like that. Probably like this. There's our storeroom, so I can have fun shifting the chests in from our wooden castle. I'm getting very close to emptying that out completely and being able to take it down. But this is part one of this building done. I'm wondering if I should just make those stairs go straight down, no landing. Let's have a look at that. I might try that. Okay, that is not right at all. <laughs> I might do that. That's better. So we come down here and down and down. Now for the rest of it. And I think we will switch to a time lapse for the rest of it. Oh, what I want to do first is mark where these pillars come up. There we are. Okay, time for me to get building the rest of this. So the first thing that I need to build is the parlour. We think of a parlour as a private space, somewhere that's quite small and cosy. Medieval times that wasn't the case. A parlour was an audience chamber. It comes from the same root as the French word parler, meaning speak. And it's where people came to the castle to do business. If tenants needed to pay their rent, if someone needed to be paid for a job that they'd done, if someone had a matter that they wanted to raise with the steward or were hoping to raise it with the Lord, they came up to the parlour 
and they spoke to someone there. Because it was a place of business, it was also where items were stored or was nearby or linked to the storage room. Then there was the room above the great chamber. Now we've had one of those in the wooden castle and this is going to function pretty much the same way. It's going to be where the Lord and his family sleep, but also where, again, business is done. The notion of a bedroom, a dedicated room to sleep and to retreat from the world, it just wasn't a medieval thing. A room like that would have been considered a waste. It would have been very strange at the time. Yes, it had a bed in it, but it was a space that afforded some privacy to the family, but not privacy from the family. And also people could still come for special audience with the Lord in the great chamber. So it had a bed, but it also had a chair for the Lord, uh, somewhere for the scribe. There might be a space for the women and the children to meet, but it was certainly not what we consider a bedroom. So there we have it. I'm not quite sure about the gables above the windows. I can find examples of these in the 13th century, in the 1200s, in Tintagel Castle for one. But I'm just not sure if I like the look of them or if I want it to be more like the Great Hall, so more just straight across. And yeah, I thought really hard about what do I do about the windows? Do I put in stained glass again? Do I make it as posh as the Great Hall? And in the end, I opted for no. So those birch trap doors, imagine that they are sheepskin over wooden frames. And on the inside, they would be painted. So they'd have vines or flowers or trees or something, some sort of pattern painted over them to make them decorative. So we'll go into the parlour first because I have, well I've got everything furnished but we'll start in here, hello. We've got two doors in, a main door and a side door. We've got shelving, I'm not sure what I'll put on there yet, possibly chests. And we've got a trestle table and a stool for the steward. And we've got a chest and he's got some emeralds in there ready to deal with the villagers. And we've got more chests over here and a little workstation, a little bench. And why chests? Lots of stuff was kept in chests because it was portable. If the Lord decided that he wanted to go on procession across his domain, or if he was called to go and see his king, everything's already packed and ready to go. You just load it all up on carts and pack mules and whatever, and away you go. So lots of things were kept in chests. So we come in here, this is the back room with the strong boxes, with the lock boxes. I've been very kind to our steward. He doesn't have to bed down in the great hall with everyone else. He's got a little cot in the lock box room. And then if we come round here, this goes down to the treasure room, the strong room, which has got an iron grill on it. There we go, I haven't moved anything in here yet, but I will. So if we come out of the parlour, and I am slowly moving the cats undercover, don't worry, there's only six left to shift. So we've got the whole upper floor yet. We come round here and this little staircase, which isn't finished, it will be covered. It will have railings up the side. I'll get to that. But this is for the Lord and Lady and their family and their trusted servants. Now, this room you'll recognise from the wooden castle. It's fulfilling exactly the same purpose. So we've got the bed where the whole family sleeps and a trusted servant might sleep on a truckle if they're lucky, otherwise on a sack filled with hay if they're not, at the foot of the bed. We've got the Lord's chair. That's the big fancy one with the back on it. We've got a not-so-fancy chair with the back on it for the lady or for the eldest son or an important visitor. And we've got a little scribe's table and a stool. And again, we've got chests. And 
here's the windows we've got shutters on the inside and if we come through here we have a room for the lady and other ladies who might accompany her, her daughter, her daughter-in-law, a friend, whoever. And I know this is a lectern, pretend it's an embroidery frame. So this is where they can do embroidery or um, maybe spinning or making gold thread or whatever else. And again, chests. Hello, darling. And just imagine that these rooms are covered with hangings, that it's the walls are whitewashed, they're possibly painted, and there would be brightly coloured embroideries and banners. Now, when I was talking about the Great Hall, I'll have to go and check. If I said there were tapestries on the walls, that's wrong. Embroideries. We don't see tapestries being mentioned in England until about the 1400s when they start to turn up in wills and the difference is of course an embroidery is needlework a tapestry is woven now I'm sure there were tapestries in existence in England before the 1400s when they show up in wills but what survives and and textiles aren't great at surviving but what we do have are embroideries like the Bayeux tapestry it's not a tapestry it's an embroidery and it wasn't made in Bayeux either. It was made in England, but anyway. <laughs> so that building puts us one step closer to getting rid of this building. Don't need the barracks anymore. We've got these. That second floor, that's the great chamber. Hello, great chamber. We've got an audience chamber there. Well, we've got the parlour and the great hall taking care of that. All that leaves is the kitchen, which is here at the ground floor. And the kitchen is going to go in over here. That's probably what I'll do next time. But we are so close to being done with this wooden castle. And speaking of done, there should be end cards popping up on the screen any second now. But if you've made it this far, I'd love to hear in the comments, where would you prefer to sleep? In the Great Hall, on your own sack, stuffed with hay? In the steward's little cot? Or in the big fancy bed in the Great Chamber with all the rest of your family? I'd love to know. Pop it in the comments. And I'll see you next time. Bye!